Welcome to another exciting episode of ET Studios AI Horizons in association with ETCIO. So far, you've seen how we've explored AI impacting, disrupting, and transforming industries such as beauty, BFSI, manufacturing, education, and even water. Today, we're going into uncharted territories with travel. Join us in welcoming Pavan Rao, who is the Global Head of Marketing at IGT Solutions. Thank you so much, Shilpa. Thank Pleasure you for your here. time. Thank you. And IGT Solutions is a premier provider of IT and BPM services to the travel, transportation, and hospitality industry. Under Pawan's able leadership, they have been using AI to leverage their operations when it comes to the agent training, when it comes to their BPO side, and when it comes to providing a better customer experience overall. And I want to ask you, Pawan, considering we're talking about travel, the first event that comes to mind was the most recent one, the CrowdStrike uh, disaster that spelled crisis across industries, especially travel. How did you handle this disruption and what role did AI play in this crisis management? Great question. Um, and um, while CrowdStrike, of course, was a very big event, um, companies like IGT Solutions plan for uh, such crises to happen. In many ways, it's not a question of if it's a question of when, right? So uh, we really take into consideration three uh, audiences or three levers, if you will, right? There's, of course, the customer, right? Somebody who's, say, flying from Delhi to New York and their flight gets disrupted. Uh, there's, of course, the company that, you know, the airline or the hotel or, or whoever that is impacted with this, where, you know, their revenues are impacted, their experience to the customer starts getting impacted. And there's, of course, uh, the agent who sits in our offices who needs to sort of work with all of these things, right? Uh, and so AI impacts, uh, you know, we, we make sure that we are leveraging AI uh, to impact each one of these areas. A uh, few examples, right? Uh, when there is a huge volume of, of queries that are coming in, right, conversational AI tools or chatbots are deployed uh, to take care of really the most, uh, you know, elementary or basic or, or really quick resolving, uh, you know, uh, solutions that, uh, that, that can get resolved. So that really uh, agents are managing high, the more complex questions the more complex queries, right? Um, AI tools also help agents uh, understand what is the next best action that they need to take to be able to solve customer issues very quickly, right? Uh, depending on multiple factors, depending on what, what's the scenario that the customer is in, depending on the sentiment of the customer, right? So a lot of that next best action contextual information uh, starts uh, you know, getting deployed because of AI. Uh, and then there's, of course, uh, the fact that you know, AI helps us manage our workforce, right? Because there, the the crisis would mean that there are peaks at different times, at different places, at different you know uh, time zones, different geographies, etc. So AI helps us in resource planning and workforce management. Uh, so so these are some of the areas where you know AI starts getting deployed when a crisis such as uh, CrowdStrike uh, sort of hits the industry. Now chatbots have been around for quite some time, right? How is AI? enable these chatbots or what is a differentiating factor now when it comes to chatbots enabled with AI? Uh, the difference is contextual search, mm -hmm. right? Uh, chatbots earlier were able to respond to a certain set of queries which were, you know, sort of in the, uh, you know, uh, inputted into, in, 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 into the chatbot per se. With generative AI, we are able to now do a lot of contextual search, understand, you know, the language of the customer, you know, in terms of the language that the customer inputs into the system, uh, and also do a, a slightly more complex set of queries. Mm -hmm. For example, we, we have uh, solutions uh, on Gen AI, uh, you know, co-pilots that we've developed, for example, for baggage management, right? People lose baggages, right? So how do they track baggages? So that's something that, you know, um, a typical chatbot would typically not, not end up doing. or, or or itinerary management, right? Creating, how do we help a customer create an itinerary, right? Which would not be something that a chatbot could directly manage, right? Because an itinerary management needs to involve uh, multiple destinations, airlines, whatever. A lot of, it, it, it's an involved process, right? So, so these are some of the areas where conversational AI actually, uh, you know, sort of improves over what a traditional, uh, you know, chatbot would typically be. 
when i'm talking to a chatbot as soon as i realize that this is not a human agent that i'm conversing with i have a tendency uh, to want human intervention right so a lot of people as soon as they realize that talking talking to a bot would want uh, to switch to a human agent how do you tackle that uh, that's a great question and intrinsically human beings want to talk to human beings because you know that's really uh, the core factor uh, and and that's really where you know the agent really comes into play and and so we do a a lot of hand holding if the customer wants to talk to an agent right there are very very many ways of uh, of uh, of ensuring that you know we we uh, you know the customers uh, are, you know ultimately are taken care of because that's their experience that really matters either they are either directed to a a a, a conversational uh, tool where there's an agent at the back a real agent who's responding to them or we move them to uh, you know a tool where there's actually an agent who's talking to them using maybe a, you know a language translator if if needed because if if the same language is not available or you know if, if that's also not something that they would want then ideally move them to an agent who uh, talks the same uh, language so yes ai does help you know help us sort of mitigate or manage uh, you know a customer needs uh, to talk to real human beings Now even before AI we had these agents at call centers right how has AI changed operations um so i'll uh, you know really it's the it's at the training stage right so we need to talk about the impact of AI from day 0 of of an agent entering into the system um in our business in that you know where we serve the travel industry right an ideal agent is somebody who is a highly empathetic mm-hmm. uh, very very well entrenched and experienced in the customer experience space right also is very very technologically savvy because there are a lot of technology systems that the agent needs to interact with uh, and at the same time be able to talk or, or be able to converse in multiple languages right because that's really what the agent needs to do right that's a complex skill set not many agents are available so therefore we invest a lot of time in training mm-hmm. right and and it takes weeks and 15 weeks for an agent to be really trained and be able to be ready in a situation where they are deployed on the shop floor ai helps us cut that training down time down significantly by a third maybe even half right uh, and how do we do that we help you know uh, deploy ai uh, you know training tools that help you know for example language or uh, you know or 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 uh, real life situations get you know uh, sort of um, um, you know role played into into the into the ai tool uh, language assessment ai helps us understand whether you know the you know the agent is uh, is speaking the right language the right tone right quicker evaluation of all of that that really helps uh, you know uh, get the agent out onto the show, you know onto the floor faster and so that that's really a way in which it's really impacting ai operations now your existing systems for you to integrate ai into them what is the foremost consideration uh, when it comes to that and also how do you address the skill gap because not everybody is tech savvy and uh, how are you going to convince them that ai is an enabler great question right and so this is again something that really starts for us when we onboard an agent into uh, into the uh, in, into our uh, you know uh, our, our training platform so to speak um, and we need to identify people uh, who are who consider ai as an enabler right who do not look at ai as something that uh, is in competition with them right today the young people that are coming uh, you know into the system they are all technologically savvy right so we really need to tap into the people who really understand ai and then who are um, who are more comfortable or who uh, sort of work with with ai tools and are able to get uh, you know leverage the best that the tool has to offer and get so we so we really do a lot of you know workshops with them you know digital workshops ai workshops getting all of these things trained into them so so that's really from a uh, from an operational you know perspective in terms of uh, you know how do we want to deploy ai in terms of how do we deploy ai in the process itself mm-hmm. there are many point offerings or points point areas where we have started deploying i give you the example of baggage for example right um there are other uh, situations where uh, you know ai starts getting deployed for example sentiment analysis right where we are able to sort of understand the sentiment of the customer and and able to track whether the customer is behaving in a certain way and then prompt the agent to sort of respond in a in a certain way so yes there are areas where ai is starting to get uh, deployed and we are going to see more and more adoption uh, of ai across you know the um, uh, sort of the customer journey as it were uh, uh, you know as we go along now the first adoption of ai i feel has been in these chatbots so how do you allay fears of people who think their jobs are going to go away you handle a big bpo 
with so many hundreds and thousands of agents working how do you tell them that uh, you know your jobs are secure um, it's uh, you know it's a great question and uh, ultimately uh, we need to understand that ultimately ai helps human beings be more human do what human beings are good at which is basically empathy understanding uh, talking to the talking to people right um, what we would typically see at least to start off with is ai would start really uh, taking away the more mundane uh, queries and and human beings would then really be managing the more complex the more involved uh, you know situations so what would typically happen is that the human uh, human in the loop is actually becomes ai in the loop where ai is helping the human skill up so we are, we you know the uh, we, we will have agents who are highly skilled highly responsive to uh, to these situations so every technological progress uh, you know is both a challenge and an opportunity for us to be able to you know leverage our human capabilities better now ai still is playing the catch up game when it comes to the empathy factor humans still hold the roost when it comes to being empathetic what are the other sort of biases that you've seen in ai and how do you guard against that great question right so um, there are uh, guardrails in ai systems are one of the most essential attributes uh, that we need to deploy and and that's something that we take very seriously you know as a company right um many many uh, and i can give you examples right for example um there is a process uh, you know guardrail right um a system even though the ai system might allow multiple uh, next best actions to be predicted the process that has been deployed in the company the ai needs to recognize that and not not uh, you know suggest or recommend actions that are beyond uh, you know that then there's the compliance uh, angle that comes into play right uh, you know there are compliance rules that uh, you know that uh, that that are applied across you know there are geographies right european union has its own rules and so on and so forth we need to make sure that our systems are actually compliant yeah. right then there's ethics involved right uh, you know there are human beings and there are you know so the ai should help uh, you know perform ethical actions that are you know um, that are uh, that are not beyond the pale or that are you know that that need to be really you know focused on making sure that we are both legally and ethically on the right path and also prevent agents mm -hmm. from being able to do uh, you know uh, some of those uh, you know uh, actions so so there's there's the guardrails are really a very very critical component of uh, ensuring a stable ai system uh, in place now how has ai helped in predictive analysis there are so many patterns that emerge how are you able to utilize ai uh, to solve all problems even uh, you know to solve problems preemptively great question so um, ai a like for example i talked about is uh, helps in sentiment analysis right so we able to uh, get some understanding of what the customer behavior is uh, what's happening and then obviously react or help the agent or or prompt the agent to to be able to react in in certain ways in some cases ai is also able to deter, help us determine patterns mm -hmm. that are not immediately obvious right and so therefore we are able to sort of identify those patterns and then sort of a either a proactively you know react to make sure that you know uh, some certain outcomes are prevented and b actually go back and make sure that we are able to prevent certain uh, patterns or certain actions from from happening so ai can help us do that we are then able to take this back into the training uh, you know and help uh, train our agents to sort of guard against this behavior or or to be able to be prepared against something like this so that's again another uh, factor where uh, you know predictive analytics happen so so pattern recognition understand Uh, how to react for certain customer behaviors helping in training these are all areas where predictive analytics uh, you know predictive ai really helps us now i'm very interested in knowing what is one such pattern that ai recognized that we couldn't as humans earlier uh, it, you know uh, again um, for example um, when there is a conversation that's going on right culturally there are uh uh you know different people talking to different people right so the cultural nuances uh, are very uh, very uh, you know very varied and very nuanced right and so you know with the impact of ai with with ai you know language tools are able to decipher certain um, you know how can i say turn of phrases that a customer might use right uh, uh, you know uh, that that might help prompt the agent uh, to a particular behavior that or, or outcome that the uh, Uh, that the customer might might want so so those are areas where ai helps right because there are you know how can i say language changes uh, you know uh, within a few kilometers right accents of 
a single language are different. Phrases, nuances are different, right? AI can help us, you know, understand some of those, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, nuances and and help react uh, faster, quicker, and better. And you're part of the travel industry. I would love to know the sort of trends that are emerging that you've seen over the last one year. Um, so great, uh, you know, question. Uh, IGT, of course, serves a lot of travel customers. We are, we are, we, we serve other industries as well. But, but um, you know, travel uh, as an area is is really where you know um, there is. Uh, uh, how can I say? Um, one in our industry, we've really seen that you know customers would like to talk to real you know uh, human beings. That's one from a customer experience area. And two, um, this is really an industry uh, which is very different from other industries in which. Our product is the experience, mm -hmm. right? Uh, in 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 the travel space, what we offer to the customer is an experience that they that they get. And as a part of that industry, that's something that we really need to uh, you know really understand mm -hmm. that uh, you know if you know we need to make sure that there is a total experience focus right from the customer right from the time the customer books a ticket through the journey map, right? So we so that's an area where some uh, you know we we really try to understand the customer really deeply for example the the journey uh, or a journey map for a, a business traveler mm. is really very different from a journey map of a of a leisure traveler right and where are the points where that traveler she might get impacted where would you know um, a company like us need to sort of help that traveler have the best possible experience in the scenario that he or she is in so that's that those are some of the nuances that i uh, you know i thought i I'd, I'd share Absolutely. It's a means to an end. And uh, you've definitely very ably communicated how AI is only going to help operations and help the end customer. So thank you so much for that, Pavan. I'm sure you will be very successful in allaying these fears that you've spoken about. And I'm looking forward to seeing what other implementations you have in store for us. Absolutely. And for more such engaging conversations, remember to stay tuned to ET Studios AI Horizons in association with ETCIO. Thank you so much, Pavan. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for watching.